it's time to cut out those pizza points, robot points, flak points, and mail them in to get the exclusive toys from your favorite toy line. For this week's toy history, we're going to take it all the way back, even before toys were plagued being pre-order exclusives, and even predating the build-a-figure concept. There was another way to raise sales of entire lines, and add incentive to get a line's complete figure run for the consumer. In this Ed's Retro Geek Out, let's bring it back all the way to the mail way. The fine art of collecting packaging points and sending them in to receive, after what seemed like months, your very own toy, sometimes an exclusive or a color variation. So be sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and strap in for some toy history. We can trace mail order catalogs back to 15th century Venice, where for all your book needs you could just get a catalog and order them. Heck, Benjamin Franklin was probably the first cataloger in America, making scientific and academic books available through mail order. And with the Transcontinental Railroad, the catalog was the perfect way to supply people with all sorts of things at all stops over America. And the most important thing too, toys. Comic books used to be flooded with all sorts of mail order gadgets, and even action figures. The perfect match, as you had your core audience attention right where they were reading about these heroes. Get your Batman and Superman toys rushed to your doorstep by enclosing a check or money order. But do allow four weeks for delivery. Often drawn like a comic, these advertisements would leave you guessing. What would you eventually end up getting in your mailbox. And during the 70s and 80s, things took a turn when toy lines introduced the Mail Away exclusive. Few remained to be a real exclusive toy and often it would just be a paint variation with the same mold as the retail figure. But not this DC Comics superpowers toy known as Clark Kent. Which kid wouldn't want Superman's alter ego next to their Green Lantern, Aquaman, or Batgirl? But blow us. Offered as a mail-away exclusive during 1986's third series of the Kenner's toy line and the second mail-away in the toy line's history, as Steppenwolf was the first character to be offered as a mail-away promo, but he would get a card release later down the line. The story was different for Clark Kent with a completely new sculpt while still maintaining enough characteristics of his Superman doppelganger figure. Added were all the basics these figures would come with, like the same seven points of articulation standing 4.5 inches tall and supplied with a superpowers action feature where when you would squeeze his legs his arms would swing around doing whatever reporter stuff is done by swinging your arms around this one was never reused but was planned to be in the fourth wave the wave that got cancelled so kids that saved up and mailed the five proof of purchases seals that you could find on any superpowers products and sent it to free Clark Kent figure in Maple Plain Minnesota. After 10 to 14 weeks, they could praise themselves lucky to have an actual mail away exclusive toy. Now, the proof of purchase point mail aways were a fun and engaging way of providing kids with extra figures. It would definitely help you move figures at retail, just like when you want to get that free Subway sandwich. But over here, you wouldn't just get a sub, you would actually get an action figure and it would be free, or at least almost free. Another interesting implementation of the mail away was for figures that weren't moving on the shelves at all. Say you had some stocked up but no one was ordering them, just make them an exclusive as a reward and kids will want to find out more about this figure. You could only get as a mail away. Now some factory errors or different paints would prove to be perfect for the mail away concept. In some instances a color variant is enough to fetch a few extra bucks 20 years down the line. Which brings us to the next exciting mail aways. Advertised in the WWF magazine, you could get a couple of Hasbro mail away figures. And thanks to the paint variations, it allowed you to distinguish them from the regular version. Also, due to the low production runs, these are now some of the most coveted WWF Hasbro toys out there. 
For only $7.95, you could get one of these mail order wrestlers like The Undertaker with Tombstone Tackle Mechanism, who got a slightly darker skin tone and eyeliner under his lower eyelids. There's also the special Hulk Hogan mail-away, who has the most distinct color variation where he's in a red attire instead of the commercial yellow release. Rare these days, but probably more popular than The Undertaker or Bret Hitman Heart, the variant. Bret came with heart attack mechanism and also with a purple heart on his black tank top instead of a pink heart as he was released to stores in 1992 from the regular release. But as with many toys, the production process in different factories can result in slightly unwanted color variations and also take into account that these action figures are also just prone to this coloring over time. So how can you be sure? The only way to really be sure is when you still have the mail away in the unopened plastic baggie it came in. But if you really want to get one of those, be prepared to pay a large sum of money for these. Tycho's Dino Riders offered a fan club membership. If you provided three Dino Rider points with three and a half bucks, you would receive one of two fan packages after a six to eight week wait, of course. And in one of the two, you would get sent a repainted pterodactyl toy. The commercial release was a gray and light brown, but this one was looking fly in a dark brown color scheme with bright orange in the extremities of his wings. You would get an authentic pterodactyl pterosaur museum quality replica, but then again, that's all it was, just a dinosaur. Not any of the accessories Dino Riders was known for or a Rulon or Dino Rider character thrown in. Then again, the Smithsonian Institution variant had its head crest removed to make it more scientifically accurate. So there's lots of pterodactyl variations out there. Nonetheless, the mail away pterodactyl is one of the more rare items in this too short-lived toy line. And then there's G.I. Joe. Go, G.I. Joe had its fair share of mail-aways and the kids loved it. There's so many box collectors often finding their boxes missing the cutout points for the mail-in gadgets, extras, and figures you could get. I could probably fill a whole video with G.I. Joe mail-aways, but here's a couple that really stuck out to me. Hooded Cobra Commander was first available as a mail-in offer in 1984. Not the first Cobra Commander and surely not the last. This mail-order promo would be available between 84 up to 90 and he never got a card at release, but due to the long availability, he's still pretty common. This hooded version is the one we saw in most Marvel comics and the cartoons, so why not make him available at retail? Well, with just one dollar and seven flag points, you could score this mail away, and the mail away concept would do what it was set out to do. Sell more toys, get kids to buy more toys for points so they could get their hands on the toy that they really wanted. The Steel Brigade mail away was a personalized concept you got from Hasbro Direct, or it could also be found on the back of certain Marvel comics. Kids could fill in their own info to get a custom file card along with the Steel Brigade Army Builder figure. Now you can be the next Joe. The figure was a mail away offered from 87 up to 94. Usually the figure was thrown together with some recolored parts, only the head was an original piece, so there's quite a few variations out there. Not only would you get the figure with accessories, a customized file card, but also a patch was thrown in with this mail away. You would get a lot of Joe for your buck here. And watch out Cobra because Fridge is coming through. William the Refrigerator Perry was during the 80s best known for being an American football player that played in the NFL for 10 seasons, most of which as a part of the Chicago Bears. He is also the second living person to make it as a G.I. Joe action figure. Pro wrestler Sergeant Slaughter was the first one. The Fritch came with a football attached to a chain weapon that he could swing around. And how could you recruit Fritch for your very own toy chest? It was simple, you just had to collect five special Fritch proof of purchase certificates from inside special Mark G.I. Joe packages and sent them to G.I. Joe headquarters to receive your very own fridge for free. Kids even needed to call in to a 50 cent charge number to get the last remaining piece of information that you needed for these certificates. When you called in, the fridge would give you his combat specialty bonus. And in another popular 80s Hasbro toy line Transformers, what you would see so often is that they would pop out a figure for one season and then later offer him as a mail away. But what about the exclusives? One of the better known mail aways for Transformers, oddly enough, came up as he stopped showing up in the cartoons and comics. 
Reflector, who did get a white Takara release in Japan, was only a mail-away exclusive for the USA, as Hasbro just delayed selling him. He got promoted via mail order from a direct mailing flyer promoting Transformers the movie, and from then on he'd be one of the common mail-away offerings on all packing flyers. Reflector is an evil marauder. The Decepticon robot turns the fine art of observation into the cruel craft of destruction. Reflector wields power with the cold click of a shutter. All you needed was two robot points and ten bucks to get your hands on this combiner composed of three robots, Viewfinder, Spectro, and Spyglass. It also included a Flash, which also doubled as a missile launcher, but the Hasbro version had to cut out the spring mechanism due to safety reasons. Damn you, Battlestar Galactic Toys! Another fun mail-away exclusive brought the AllSpark action to the edge of your wrist in the form of a wristwatch called Time Warrior. Released in 1985, this Autobot symbol styled watch would open up as you pressed the mount. The face blades would open up and you could read the time. Six robot points and ten bucks is all it took. You're running out of time, you only have a few more minutes to complete your mission before the Decepticons return. Quick, check the time with Time Warrior, the one Autobot you'll want with you on every mission. And then for the LJAN Thundercats Toyland we got Mumra. No, not that one! The creepy mummy version you could only get with the Mumra Tomb Fort Resplace set. But it was also available when you had enough proof of purchase points and the patience. Then you could get your very own Mumra without breaking the bank on a playset. With six points worth of tokens and a delivery time of one to six months, depending on the country. Mumra is the awesome, all-powerful, evil being whose quest is to capture the power sword of the Omens. Before he transforms into the terrifying creature, he dwells in his Black Pyramid Fortress in his true form, that of an agent decaying mummy. Now the Mumra action figure had no battlematic action, but did come with poseable arms, head, and a staff accessory. He was only available through this offer and is not sold separately in any retail store. Unfortunately, there was no variations to the tomb playset version of this figure. No color variations, but he would get shipped to you in a little brown box with an added Thundercats promo catalog for you to go out and buy even more of these awesome toys. And for this next one, we're gonna have to take a little dive over to Street Sharks. The Street Sharks were bigger and badder than any of the other toys on the shelf. Their mounts were meant to fit a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle figure, and with their Mailaway exclusive, they were hoping to cash in an even bigger fish. The 12 inch Mailaway was actually a beta test for Mattel and Streetwise to offer higher end, more expensive toys. Customers would order this mail in, and then you had a mailing list of customers who would buy bigger, expensive figures. It was 12 inches because he needed to be bigger and dominate the other giant toys, just like the smaller ones did. Mega Talking Ripster has only been available as a mail away exclusive for a limited time back in 1994. It would get shipped to you in a cardboard box with no promo on the box whatsoever. And when you got it, you still needed to assemble its fin and pop in some batteries because when you would push his buttons, he would start talking famous phrases from the cartoon like shark attack, jawsome, mmm, lunch and growl, crunch and burp. And as far as mail away exclusives go, this is probably one of the coolest toys out there. A giant street shark? That's freaking awesome. But because it's a giant figure, you would need to space for it, and talking about space, Star Wars would often promote an exclusive figure for free if you sent in five proofs of purchase points. You could get Palpatine, a cool, gruesome, decaying figure, but just as soon as the promotion ended, they would be available at retail, and they would look just the same. Then there was another Star Wars mail away promo that piqued the curiosity of many Jedi fans. As kids were going crazy with the release of a new movie, any spoilers would be sensitive information, so what to do to boost sales before the release of The Empire Strikes Back? Offer kids a free secret Star Wars figure. With the ever so slightly added info of be among the first to have this secret action figure from The Empire Strikes Back, a character from the movie that comes with a laser pistol, movable head, arms, and legs? Well, that didn't really help. Almost all of them just come with a laser pistol. Then again, the commercial left little to the mystery as they just showed the new bounty 
Bounty Hunter toy in full glory. You were able to get Bosk in just 8 to 12 weeks. Another Bounty Hunter just like the Boba Fett mail away that everybody was looking forward to and then got a disappointing delivery. As it came without any rocket firing action, but we've talked about Boba enough on toy history. <laughs> mail aways were often just a source of mystery among toy line collectors. You found this toy, it didn't really look like the original release. What was going on? But for most, it's clear how you got them because the documentation is still around or confirmed by toy companies. But in some instances, they didn't have any source or any mail-in papers, so it has kept people wandering for years and years on toy variants like Savage He-Man, who is also known as Wonder Bread He-Man, often believed that he was part of a Wonder Bread mail-away concept. But then again, new leads have caused the story to shift him to being more of a buy a three, get one free promo Mattel did. As they shipped away the brown hairstyle He-Man with whichever weapons they had lying around. Now there's a lot more mail away stories out there, so leave them down in the comments below which mail away toy you got back in the day and how you remember saving up the proof of purchase points for that. Also, I put out 80s and 90s videos every week, so subscribing to the channel and hitting the notification bell will get you free videos every week. No pizza or robot points required, just hit the subscribe button. You can also follow me on Instagram or Facebook and if you want to do more you can always leave a like on this video or check out my Patreon page. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. See you later guys. Bye.